All right, I'm out of detox. Um, I was coming off 24 milligrams of Suboxone, which is, if you know, if anyone's kicked Suboxone, they know how difficult that is. Um, we haven't gotten to the part of the story where I went to prison for the third time for the pimping thing, but on that particular term, I started in Santa Barbara County Jail, and I'd gotten jumped when I was in jail. I tried to buy drugs. I, my, you know, I got the money to the people. As soon as the money landed, they jumped me. Straight dope fiend moves. These are like the kind of guys that are tweakers that live in bushes. But they broke three of my ribs and they jacked me, so I didn't get any of the dope. And I had a kick. I was doing about 40 milligrams of buprenorphine a day, which is like insane. You don't need that much, and I was injecting it. And when Paul died in November. Um, I just completely went off the deep end. Um, not like I was running around like going on drug benders, but um, I started doing the Suboxone IV again and I was abusing them, so I wanted to quit. Problem with Suboxone is it takes forever. As you know, when I kicked the last time with the three broken ribs in jail, um, it took only 10 days, honestly. You know, I'm pretty tough when it comes to the withdrawal. Um, I can definitely be a baby when I'm initially sick, but I don't know. I mean, I kicked methadone, 180 milligrams of that when I was in the feds. And uh, I think that that, my pain threshold was just, you know, completely crossed at that point. Like it was beyond pain that I could actually deal with. Like kicking methadone is, for anyone that's on the methadone clinic, on a high dose it's like um i can't think of anything more painful that i've been through in my life physically than coming off methadone i mean it was really severe so anyway let's get to the present so i checked into a detox in la on friday and i've been doing 24 milligrams of suboxone and i like suboxone it's been a, a good crutch but when Paul died, I started taking benzos and all sorts of other shit. You know, I was like doing other drugs and um, a lot of that was just depression. And I think that's why I wasn't putting out as many videos. But I went to detox for four days. So I was kicking 24 milligrams of methadone or of Suboxone, 24 milligrams of um, Suboxone. And uh, I had a small Xanax habit. Not enough to really have a bad kick, but I went in there and, you know, I'm used to going to really, 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 really expensive. Hey, you want to say hi, Nico? Yeah, say hi. Hi. Um, I'm used to going to, like, really plush fuck detoxes, like, where they give you mud baths and they're just ridiculous. They're nothing like what a detox should be. This was the first time I went to a state-run detox. Um, I've never been to one, and it's, you know, at, like, some grimy L.A. shit. And to get me off Suboxone, they put me on methadone. And they were giving me these just paltry amounts of methadone, like, these... I don't know, because they don't tell you what the dose is, but a lot of the other people in the detox speculated that... They were giving me like three or four milligrams of methadone twice a day, 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Basically, it was like barrack style detox where there's just a bunch of men, mostly convicts. Everyone's just kicking. I mean, we had buckets we're puking in. And, um, you know, for four days, I felt the kick. I mean, I stopped taking subs before like a couple I knew that you know it takes a few days for the actual withdrawal to kick in so I started I stopped taking them a couple days before I went in and I was already like sick you know when I posted my video talking about going to detox it was um I was just all Xanaxed out you know I think I was on GHB too just trying to um you know, I, I've tried multiple times to kick Suboxone at home, and it's really, really tough. I, I never found out what the magic cure was, and it takes forever. So I go to detox for four days. I feel it the first night, start kicking, can't sleep. I'm thrashing in my bed, moaning. 
making like sexual sounds like, uh, uh, and people in the barracks say, dude, shut the fuck up, man. When I'm sick, I make sexual groans. I, I don't know why. Call me old fashioned. But I'm six days off Suboxone. So what happened is like I was sick in detox um, for like four days. Everyone, there are other people in there kicking Suboxone too. It's like a common thing. I mean, you got to get off it eventually. I know I've always espoused Suboxone. I think it's a good crutch. But <laughs> I want to do an ayahuasca treatment with a hallucinogen to try to, you know, get, I'm really trying to get into spirituality. Um, I've been to a couple AA meetings while I've been kicking the Suboxone. And what I did is I just got a bunch of prescription drugs. Like I'm taking a shitload of gabapentin, I'm taking Kratom, um, GHB, which hell was like, I'm, and I'm not a doctor. I'm not recommending anybody do what I do. I'm simply telling you what my medical experience is, has, was like on this kick. Um, Soma's, uh, Clonopin, uh, Tramadol, you know, all this stuff is, is helping me. Um, I don't like being on all these drugs because it, especially like GHB basically makes me feel drunk. But, I, you know, I was shooting the subs at the end. I was injecting them again, which is, I don't, it doesn't even give you a rush. It's pointless, but... It's just, I knew the direction that I was going, you know, like losing Paul when I got that call. Um, it's like at 6.30 in the morning. And I already knew when his fiance was calling me that early, like what had happened. And it, it, it broke my heart. I mean, I know a lot of people have commented about losses that they've taken, but um, I've never experienced pain like that. Just so acute. And um, I think it was a ticking time bomb for me to not get sober, you know, and I want to get sober again, I was sober for three months, for three years, and a lot of that three years was happy for me, some of it wasn't, but I learned from my, I think every time you relapse, it's the point of June Gloom, my next book, it's an autopsy of my relapse, and it's all the lessons that I learned about myself, and I learned quite a few things, um, about why I relapse, and now I'm a chronic relapser, but I'm on day six, and I'm still taking like GHB, and gabapentin, Somas, Xanax, I'm just, I'm all, fu I mean, I went to an AA meeting the other day, and I was stumbling, it was so embarrassing, like, I was, I was loaded, I was belligerently loaded, but I'm not doing it to get loaded, I'm doing it to, because the Suboxone withdrawal symptoms are, are fucking gnarly, like, you have to mix stuff to be able to get rid of those symptoms. And, you know, I don't like being, like, inebriated on other drugs. But my plan right now is to get on Vivitrol. You know, you get a shot once a month, and you can't drink, and you can't do opiates on it. And I, I think I'm going to start going to meetings again, even though I fucking loathe them. I hate meetings. They've been force-fed to me my entire life with all the rehabs I've been to. But, you know, I think it's, I've seen it work for other people, you know? I know I know people that are just as bad at drug addicts as me and the program somehow help them going through the steps. So I'm open-minded and I'm trying to embark on a journey because I have a son and, you know, I, I want to be... Uh, the best father that I can be. I want to be the best husband I can be to my wife. I want to be the best friend that I can be to my friends and best son I can be to my parents. And it got to a point with the Suboxone where I was starting to abuse it. I was starting to do other drugs. And, you know, I, I had tricked myself into thinking that that was sobriety. <clears throat> and I, I it, it worked for me to some degree for a while. But there was definitely a string of relapses, and I like Vivitrol, how you get a shot once a month, and, you know, you're basically, you're good, you know? I, it's, I heard it, it's very effective from the people that have been on it. So that's my trip. I'm just doing a bunch of Kratom and GHB, and I'm at my house all fucked up. But, um... You know, a lot of people have 
giving me advice. Hey, you got to taper down. I didn't take. I just went the hardcore way. Cold turkey. Take other drugs until I don't feel withdrawal symptoms anymore. You know, take Ambien at night and whatever I'm doing. Again, I don't recommend you guys take drugs like that. But I think it's important to document this fork in the road for me because, you know, when I was sober for three years, I helped other people, you know. Even if you're not an AA, a tenet of being sober is being altruistic and helping other people. And I don't think I've done enough of that because I think my soul was kind of, you know, arrested by the buprenorphine. I wasn't able to be selfless or empathetic you know it was like more about me and my career and I don't want to be like that I'd rather start this journey you know continue with the stories I want to have a more structured channel so that it's not inconsistent my life I mean you're hearing stories about my life believe me my life is still crazy it's fuck the shit that's been going on the last few you like I can't wait to tell people these stories they're wild just it's a never ending advent, misadventures um but i also think it's important to document recovery or spiritual growth cuz i just want to do it for me it has nothing to do with anything else you know it's looking at my son and thinking i might not make it cuz fentanyl's everywhere is killing everyone right now just killed paul and uh I don't want him to grow up without a father. I don't want my wife to grow up, you know, to be a widow. I don't want my parents to have to bury their only child. So I'm in a good place. You know, I'm six days off subs right now. And I don't feel I'm on enough other stuff where I don't feel withdrawal, which is amazing. I didn't even know that was possible, but I got really good um, addiction specialist helping me with it. And the GHB is like miraculous. Like you don't feel any of the um, hot and cold flashes. You don't get the goosebumps. You don't get the phantoms. I hate the smells. Where you, like it, you seriously like can be in a room and you, you have like dog scent. It's amplified to that degree. Like you can smell buttholes. Just a whole barrage of buttholes so anyhow um i know that i'm rambling and i want you to know that i'm inebriated it's not my normal self but it has the you know the ends justify the means i want to get to the seven day period and then i want to just stop taking all this medication and i know that subs i'm still going to have like insomnia and there's going to be the restless leg syndrome and there's going to be shit that is uncomfortable but i mean you know, it's, I'm at a point in my life where if I get sobriety, I think that I'm going to achieve really great things and I think I'm going to be a really great father and, and husband. So I have my eye on the prize and I'll document my trials and tribulations of recovery this time. I'd love to pick up a year of just total abstinence from drugs and maybe even go through the steps, even though I fucking hate them hate meetings they bore me um but as the old adage says my way isn't working and i understand that and i want to be clean again i'm really i'm i'm fighting and i'm really trying to make the effort and if anyone has questions about kicking sabox and i've done it cold turkey i'm not doing it cold turkey this time right like you know i'm on a whole on a copious amounts of different substances that are working in concert to quell all the symptoms and it's working famously. Like, I'm not feeling withdrawal symptoms. I'm just, you can see how I am. I'm just, I'm loopy. I'm saying random shit, doing weird stuff, you know, uh, GHB especially, I'm just, you know. But I'm proud of that six days. I fought for it. And uh, I know a lot of people say they're stuck on methadone, st stuck on Suboxone. There's ways to, to beat it. You know, if you understand the affinities and uh, other chemicals that you can take to help get you off it, you know. 
and I'm really grateful. I'm grateful for six days. And I promise that I'm gonna get more organized with my channel. I'm gonna take it more seriously. Um, it's just been depression, it's been a drug issue, and it's been the, the stuff that's normally, you know, plaguing me throughout my life. But I'll do a story for sure tonight, even if I'm all fucked up, whatever. Like, we'll just keep going. I have like literally a hundred more. I have some of my best stories. Second prison term, third prison term, those were both. Cr my third prison term was, is entertainment. You guys will be really happy with that. And we have a lot of ground to cover. So get more organized, get it structured so that videos are released on a certain date. And I'm very appreciative for the following, for everybody that supports me. Big shout out to Monty Harris for looking out for me. I really appreciate that. You know, it helped Karina while I was away. And I'm back now, and I got my eye on the prize, and you're gonna see a lot more of me, a lot more stories. I'm gonna try to get it consistent, because I know that's what you guys want. And I got good ones. I got ones that I know you like. Um, if you haven't bought the album already, the link will be below. Like, that really helps me. You know, in the beginning, I was like, panhandling, like, hey, send me GoFundMes. But I got enough money where I was able to jump into this where I can do it more comfortably. And I'm really appreciative. And now I sell the blotter, the book, and the album. Um, you know, if you guys want to support me, the links will be in the comment section and the description. And I appreciate it. The album's good. Everyone's giving me really good feedback on it. So check it out. It's only 10 bucks. 10 bucks for two hours and 40 minutes of stories and skits and... Johnny Depp acting as Hunter S. Thompson and it's just priceless shit, you know? I'm proud of it. It's a good underground thing and we're about to refine it and get it more commercially saliable and viable. So get that bootleg version while you can. Ten bucks. Alright, I'm rambling. Surely it's the Gavapentin or what it probably the GHB, whatever. But um I love you. And of course, Palabra. Bye-bye.